I had about 60 slides and um, can everyone hear me? Is that alright? Yeah. I had about 60 slides and it was a bit much so today I actually don't have any slides so um, it's really good. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, I, do have, I do have a demo though. Um, if we go Chrome. Um, I was going to talk today about uh, Android scripting engine. Has anyone here used the scripting engine in and on Android phones? Oh, we got one. That's good. Um, uh, if you want to go to Android scripting engine, it is code.google.com. Everyone see that? Yep. Yeah. Everything you need to know is actually on this website. So I actually started doing a presentation and I thought I'd bugger it, it's all on here. Um, Android scripting engine is basically a way that you can play with scripting languages on the Android phone. If you want to do a bit of development, you don't want to install Eclipse, mess around with Java, C++, you've got a little language you want to play with. Uh, it supports uh, all these languages, JRuby, Lua, Perl, Python, JavaScript via Rhino. Uh, Beanshell, is, I don't really like Beanshell. Has anyone ever used it? It's, I don't know why they even have it on there. Um, it's pretty cool, actually. Uh, the API reference, if you have a look through there, you can play with pretty much everything within the, in Android um, via your scripts. And they have some great little example programs, which I had open in the window. But I don't have now. If I go um, to my phone, which I should have here. Start that one up. I did actually have... Um, can I get to it via here? This menu? Probably not. There. I had a nice little example of it running on my phone here and I was broadcasting it back to the screen. But I'll try to see if I can just quickly get it going on the emulator for you. Everyone know about the Android emulator? Who's used yeah, Android? It usually doesn't feature in the same sentence. Sorry? Quick no, it doesn't. That's why I started it first and then started talking. Um, While well, that's starting up. Um, <laughs> I had a, it works really nice on the phone anyway. Um, we can't use the document thing, can we? That doesn't work. No? Okay, no, don't do it. Um, actually, I can do it via. Um, oh, how do you open a. Is it Nautilus? No. Hey, that's it. Sorry for boring everyone. <coughs> so anyway, just to talk about the uh, the scripting engine while all that stuff fires up. Um, I program in Groovy most of the time, and they don't actually have Groovy on here, so I do a bit of mucking about with Lua. Um, which seems to work quite nicely. Uh, there's quite a lot of examples in Lua. If you want to have a look through, if you click on the Lua one, if you want to install it, you can just go there to the APK, install it, or you can use the little code. And on the actual phone, if this has worked... Oh, I have no slides. Watching me try and start JNLP. Anyway, if you want to install it, you get the choice of all the little scripts. There's some little scripts that come with it. There's a little script called Shut Up, which I was going to show you. Which uh, okay, I can show you on here. So if you go and launch up the little scripting engine, you see that alright? Yep. There's only one little program on this emulator and for oh no, I've got the other ones, yep. So there's this one and a little one here called shutup.lua, and if I was actually running it on the real phone, I could actually run it for you, but because it's in emulator. But uh, that's just this is just a little script that um, uh, detects if your phone is facing that way or that way. If you turn it over it mutes it turns the ringer off if you turn it that way, turns it back on. So as you can see here, you can get into the Android API uh, into events. So the guy who was on here before talking about events, you can hook into all of that stuff. And uh, you can get a little event, check where, what the, the, um, whether the phone's up or down. Um, gives a little vibrate there, see? A little uh, short vibration to say it's in silent mode. And then it toggles the ringer 
and then if it's the other way around, it does the opposite, and then it sleeps. And this thing runs as a little service, uh, and just runs in the background. If I actually run this, it actually won't do anything on the um, on the emulator, but uh, I can show you how it actually runs, um, and how the scripts actually sit there. If I go back to home again, uh, you get this little thing at the top here. It just says you've got little services running. You can drag that down. Think. Anyway, on the real phone, you can stop the number of services running, and you can stop and start them. You can stop them there if I want to stop it. And then there are some other ones which are more interactive. So if I go, I'm so used to using the phone. It's funny, funky using this thing. If you can go and do the the, the standard Hello World, there's one called Hello User. Let's have a quick look at it. It just asks for your name, and does this? This is my favourite Android command, make toast. Just just great. It reminds me of my student days where I just lived on toast all the time. Toast and smash. You get smash in this country. It's packet mashed potato. Yeah, it's <laughs> toast and smash sometimes as well. Uh, so I can save and run this. And it doesn't work. Come on. Oh, and it's gone the other way around. Oh. Steve. Okay. And I should get a little toast pop up. There you go. Hello, Steve. Even though it's having a bit of a identity crisis there. And there's heaps more you can do with it. If you go back to the um, site there that I was on before, uh, there's a nice little video down the bottom. They talk about um, some stuff they did with rockets where they were sending um, Android phones up. I think they only had a day to um, like a sort of flight window and they knew they could send this stuff in these rockets. So they did some stuff with the scripting engine, mocked it up quickly, stuck a couple of Android phones. I think they had an Arduino and some other things in there and sent it up in this rocket and they did it all in 24 hours. So the scripting engine sort of got them going really quickly without having to sort of go crazy with all the IDEs and all that stuff. And uh, the right support for other languages, apparently you can hook in your other scripting languages. Most of those ones you see there on the right are basically brought to us by some of the stuff I talked about yesterday, the um, JV, alternative JVM languages. So I presume you can probably put PHP on there and other things because they've got things like Resin and um, Groovy. There's some problem with Groovy apparently that it won't work, but uh, I think a fair amount of people are doing Perl and Python and things like that. So uh, on that note, I think I'll open it over to questions. If anyone's got any, I'll attempt to answer them as long as they're not about Linux and projectors. <laughs> so, well, all that stuff I showed you there before in the API reference you can get into. So, if you have a look down there, they've got um, um, there's lots of things to do with logging, notifying. They've got Bluetooth, you can access the GPS. Sorry? Yes, yes. Yeah, and the, the other thing I didn't mention about the scripts is you can actually, um, if I go back here and do ADB shell, um, is it running there? They're all actually just stored on the SD card as uh, script files. So you can, if you want to, pull them off the phone, edit them in a different editor, and muck about with them there. If you don't want to actually type into the actual device, which is not very Nice. Uh, on the actual editor there, the little REPL thing, it's a good way to describe it actually, um, there's a little API browser in there. You can browse through all the API calls, but it doesn't actually tell you what they do or anything in the API browser, so it's not, not particularly useful. But it's really great for just mucking about if you want to write little scripts. It'll hook into um, if you, there's a little uh, thing called Lapel. I don't know if anyone's used that. There's a few of the, that's a paid app, but there's a few free ones as well which will run scripts based on your GPS location, time of the day, and things like that. So you can write little scripts that will fire off at different times of the day, or when you go to the office, it puts your ringer on, and things like that. So this, anyway, it's a good, fun little environment to muck about with. Any other questions at all? Is it like the repo um, example scripts, or scripts that people have put together and just work that on there so you can share them out? 
I think so, uh, on the Google code. Yeah, on the scripting side. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a bit of stuff in there in the examples, but I don't know if there's an actual repo. There's a mailing list. Um, I'm not particularly active on it at the moment. I did this talk about six months ago and then just pulled it out. Um, so there may be something on there now. It would be a good idea just to have a little uh, sort of code site. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, there's quite a few in there in the examples, but most of them seem that the Lua one seems to have a lot more examples. Some of them just have hello world and you have to sort of work out the rest yourself. But it's pretty easy to tinker around with. Anything else? Thank you. Well done, thank you.